Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to my very quick impressions video of the Vision Ears of E7. I recently bought them from Hong Kong Gadget in Thailand. And firstly, you know, a quick disclaimer as to why I bought this, because this is not exactly a modern day flagship from Vision Ears. As a matter of fact, I have been asked by some well-meaning friends like why I did not pick up the more recent flagships from Vision Ears, such as the Vision Ears um, EXT, such as the Earl or, or the Elysium. So to that, I have to say, guys, I've tried all these three more um, flagshipy IMs from Vision Ears, but this is what my heart settled on. And I do, ha I do have to say that this wasn't necessarily love at first listen, but I knew that I would like it when I, you know, if I had, if, if I, you know, uh, listened to it more. It was one of those situations where I knew this, this would be not exactly a slow burner for me, but something between like love at first listen and a slow burner for me. And um, I listened to this, to the demo unit at Hong Kong Gadget for three straight days. And then, you know, I EQ'd with my Sony DAP. I don't usually EQ guys, but with this Sony DAP, I, fi I find that EQing is just a lot of fun. And it works, like it works better than I've ever experienced EQ working, right? And I mean, by that, I mean, um, if I talk about my previous experiences with EQ, which was mostly with Rune, because I used to be a big headphone person and I used to EQ a lot of my headphones, including the LCD-5, which I felt needed a lot of EQ. And uh, so using this Sony WM-1 ZM-2 or ZM-2 EQ, I've had so much fun, guys. Like this is the EQ profile that you sort of see that I have of the Vision Ears of E7. So I'll talk about that in a bit. But uh, uh, overall, guys, I'm really enamored with this and I've just unboxed my unit. It's uh, it's mint, it's fresh of the box, it's fresh out of the box. So it comes with this cable, which is a fairly decent cable. It's not the final word on cables, it is a bit thin, uh, but it's fairly ergonomic and it does coil nicely and it's not microphonic and all that. It's serviceable. Uh, it comes in this uh, nice hockey puck case. It's, it's metal, metal, it's aluminum, I think. And um, it's a very premium looking case, you know, if that matters to you with grooves for the shells. And it does come in with a few other paraphernalia. For example, it comes in with this, you know, usual paperwork stuff, a cleaning cloth. Um, it does have like a whole bunch of cleaning equipment here that you might find handy. And one quarter inch adapter you get welcomed to the VE family from Vision Ears. So they're based out of Germany, guys. Uh, Cologne in Germany, which is an interesting part of Germany that I've actually been to a few times. Cologne is incidentally known for his music scene. Somewhat, like a lot of different cities in Germany have their own music scene, but that's what it is. The face plates are pretty lovely. They're pretty comfortable. Like I've had no issues wearing them. Like I said, I, I have demoed them for three straight days before deciding to buy them um and yeah they're pretty amazing i think so firstly technical performance wise i was pretty surprised at how close they get to my more expensive iems because i happen to own let's say for example um the aroma audio jewel which is like a five thousand dollar iem uh, more than two times two times more expensive than this However, this was quite close in terms of its resolution, overall technicalities. And as a matter of fact, I mean, with IMs, it's oftentimes like beyond $2,000, like the incremental resolution you get or, or sound staging and imaging often only becomes evident with extremely well recorded tracks. That does happen like re with really well mastered tracks. I do feel like the Aroma Audio Jewel uh, strips ahead a bit in terms of technical performance relative to the E7, but for most tracks, like this does hold its own in terms of technical performance. Tonality wise, guys, it's gonna be subjective, but I do wanna talk about uh, the so-called objective stuff, which is a graph. This is, this is from Critical. So you see a sense of the frequency response. This response obviously will be somewhat affected by the coupler or the measurement rig that one uses, right? But for all practical purposes, essentially what I hear which has led me to EQ it thus, is I do sense that there is some needed pin again, so I do boost 2K and 4K a bit. Uh, I don't mess with the 8K. The 8K on its own does sound a bit shimmery. 
However, once you boost the upper mids and the lower treble, the 8k becomes more manageable because they sort of balance each other out. And I think if I recall correctly, I do boost 16k just a bit right over here. Uh, so that gives the uh, IEM a more se a greater sense of air. The base is fine, but I do add a sub base shelf. So that's basically my EQ guys. And with this EQ and this IEM takes EQ like a champ. And I'm not just saying this for this IEM, for all IEM, especially of the Sony DAP. The Sony WM1ZM2 is such a monster of a device. First of all, just to you know be more clear, it's not as heavy as the Hebe RS8 or even the Aslan current SP3000. The SP3000 was it's just not reusable for me. I've tried, I've AB'd this by the way with a lot of the modern day dApps, the more, more recent flagship releases before deciding to buy this. The reason I bought this is that although this has a certain coloration, the Sony DAP, which is on the darker side or warmer side with a fair amount of trouble, energy, especially in the air frequencies, I do feel that this EQ is such a masterclass EQ that I've managed to get my desired sound from every IM that I've tried this on. So I have a preset also for the Aroma Audio Jewel, which makes this the, uh, the Aroma Audio Jewel more exciting of using a certain EQ a preset that I've configured. Now, this is what I have for the Vision Ears. Like I said, I boost the sub bass a bit. I boost the 2K and 4K a bit. Uh, 8K is essentially where it is. I, I, I This shows a slight boost here, but you know, you can play around with it, of course. And 16K lends a certain amount of clarity uh, and more than clarity, a certain amount of air around instruments, a certain sort of uh, airiness and openness to the sound, which then makes this a masterclass IM up there with some of the best I've ever tried, honestly, guys. And the faceplates look so nice. So that's it, guys. And overall, I mean, you know, I talked about technical performance already. Uh, it does have very decent sound staging and imaging. It, it is an all BA IM. So it's not going to rock your world with its bass. However, for BA bass, it's very well done BA bass. And I'm extremely picky about BA bass. I never thought I'd buy another BA bass IM, honestly. This is the only BA bass IM I have in my collection. I have owned the U12T, which is a decent IM for uh, in terms of bass production, uh, despite having BA. I have owned the Oyola Straley, which is an okay IM for bass. And it has, uh, the, the Traily has BA bass, which over time I learned to not like. I have really enjoyed the BA bass of the Unique Melody Multiverse Mentor, which I'll talk about in a future review. I did not enjoy the BA bass of the QDC Anolia VX, which was soft and lacking in sort of, you know, impact. This BA bass that's inside this IM is very decent. It's decent to the point that I find that with EQ, I find it impactful, I find it textured, and I find it a lot of fun and pleasing. Mid-range is masterclass on this. There's a certain amount of lushness that comes through, which is very, uh, you know, uh, I guess typical of Vision Era stuff. And mid-range mid is just amazing, guys. Like, it's really up there. It's better mid-range than I feel I get with most of my IMs in my collection, perhaps even all my IMs in my collection. And treble, like I said, you saw my EQ, so I boost the lower treble and the air frequencies, and I do get a lovely airy presentation with the right amount of sharpness and sizzle and sparkle. So that's it, guys. Um, a wonderful IEM. I've, I'm of course going to burn them in and maybe do a long term review later. And of course, I'll be dropping a review of this one you need to have the WM1 ZM2. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.